Yes, repair video time. This is a inverter, right? The inverter is actually inside the box. The person who gave it to me said that uh, he just bought it from eBay and when he plugged it to the battery, it immediately blew up. So something is very wrong inside of it. And made in China on both sides. That's how I make sure that it's actually made in China, not somewhere else like in uh, Japan. So yes, let's open it up and see how the inverter looks like. Got a bluish thing here. 600 watts. 1200 watts. That's a pretty high power for a small inverter like this. Let me bring my inverter here. So yes, here is my inverter I used uh, a while ago. But I changed it, I have used another inverter for my backup system now. It's a 300 watt modified square wave. Let's see how much it weighs. 683 grams. And this one. 633. So this one is a bit lighter. And this even says that it's double the power. And if we can repair this, I will connect it to the oscilloscope. So we can see it actually is maybe not a pure sine wave inverter. Let's take the lid off and see what's inside of it. Oh, look at that, they got some uh, PCBs here. That looks a bit familiar. It looks like this actually is a pure sine wave inverter. You can buy these boards on eBay. This creates a high frequency PWM signal for the converter on the output. The pull bridge makes a pure sine wave. You have some feedbacks and stuff like that as well. I think Great Scott actually made a video about these inverters as well. These specialized uh, boards. In there we can see the four uh, switching transistors for the transformer. These two are blown. You can see that there's some blackening here. There are the rectifier diodes. Or actually, we've got some rectifier diodes here. What can those be? Let's have a close look at those two. Interesting. There is another board here. That's maybe that one that generates the PWM signal for the transistors here. For transforming it up. Let's, let's unscrew the transistors from the case. And let's slide the PCB out. Yes, now the components are unscrewed. Let's slide out the circuit board. Here we got it. So I want to change all of these transistors here and see what the actual fault was. Still don't know what the real fault is. And these two transistors here, these are reverse polarity protection. These are P-channel MOSFETs. So when you reverse connect the battery, these two will shut down the system. They will not let any electricity go into these uh, components here. So that's a very nice uh, solution. We are not using this uh, silly diode across these two terminals. Here we've got the fuses. 100 amp, 250 amp fuses, some capacitors. It even had a temperature sensor, 70 degrees Celsius. It looks like a pretty good uh, inverter actually. So there's two transistors in uh, parallel. Here's a primer of the transformer. How this works, this is a uh, DC to AC to DC to AC converter. So DC comes in here, turns to AC, back to DC here, and back to AC. So, a lot of steps. So, let's uh, desolder these transistors and see what they are. Now, I've removed the transistors and cleared out the holes there. You can see here one blown transistor. It's blown pretty, pretty badly. I have some new transistors here that I'm going to plug in. But before I do that, I will measure the gate voltage with the oscilloscope and see how the waveform looks like if the drive circuit is broken. Now I plugged it in and uh, let's have a look at the oscilloscope. Let's have a look at the waveform. Let's turn it on. That looks a bit strange. Is that the channel that uh, had the blown transistors? Yes. So that waveform looks pretty strange. Let's try the other one. Since that one looked much better, how much dead time do we got here? 
Yes, a little bit of dead time. Not that much. See the dead time here? It looks like only one transistor have that problem. Which is that one. We need to see what the problem is. Because that's not good for a transistor. It is very lossy here and here. There will be a large uh, voltage drop on it and it will actually damage the transistor. It should be a pure square wave like that. Maybe the gate resistor is bad. Because here is after the gate resistor. And this is before the gate resistor. This is a big difference between those. I measured here. That's here is a gate resistor. This measured good here and bad here. So maybe some problem here when the transistor blew. Slow of residue here. Let's see what the problem is. Yes, I measured the resistor. It should be 10 ohms, but it's now 2.2 kilo ohms. And the thing you saw in the oscilloscope, it was like a discharging and charging a capacitor. Because the oscilloscope cable is a coaxial. It acts a little bit as a capacitor. So I need to change that uh, resistor here. Hopefully they used bad transistors. I'm going to try to put these transistors in there instead. This one comes from a working UPS. Because if it's not working, I don't know what the problem is. Because the waveform looks pretty good. I don't have any SMD components. I'll try to put this 10 ohm resistor in there somehow. Yes, it could have been nicer, but hopefully it works. Now the new transistors are installed. Let's connect the power supply. So I'm losing a current limited power supply from an old computer. So if something happens, it just shuts off. So let's turn it on. And it killed it. So now I need to try it with a big uh, lead acid battery. Now I've got a big uh, lead acid battery and a current limiting lamp. Let's hopefully nothing explodes. Nope, they are not warm. The LED isn't green. Can I connect a load to it? Do I get any voltage out? We don't know that. I turn it around, I'm going to measure the large uh, filtering capacitor. So turn it on. Some LEDs are lighting up green there. They should have like uh, 350 volts across it. Yes, 360 volts. That's good. It's actually doing something. Time for a lamp test. Let's see if it turns on. Yes. It did turn on. I saw clicking from that. Was it the transistors? Oh, they are cool. The full bridge. The full bridge is cool. The protection. That's good as well. So let's install this back in the case. Let's have a proper load. Always discharge the capacitor so don't shock yourself. Now we've got the circuit and everything back in place. Let's plug it in and see if it turns on. Yes. The light is working. I want to connect a tungsten lamp here and we're going to connect the oscilloscope to it. Now I've got a 35 watt halogen lamp in the bulb holder. You can see the old LED that I got there. I bypassed these lamps here. So let's turn it on and see if it uh, works or if it explodes. Yes, it dimmed up it slowly. That's quite neat. The oscilloscope here. I'm going to try to probe it. I have nothing connected to ground here, so it will be no explosion. Okay, connect the negative here and the testing here. Let's have a look at the oscilloscope. A pure sine wave. Pretty nice filtering as well. There's no high frequency ripple on it. Very nice. Is the fan revving up? Sounds like that. And that filtering is quite good. 
having it running a little while. So the problem must have been that some of these uh, transistors had been bad from the beginning. Or maybe that they have screwed it in uh, so hard that they actually cracked the crystal. And maybe they haven't even tested at the facility before it went to shipping. Now everything is closed and uh, still works pretty nicely. And the LED is green here. Hope you find this uh, repair video interesting. Thanks for watching.